Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Disney's What If from Marvel Comics. This is What If Zombies. I got the Cranberry Zombie song in my head. I wish I could play it. And Miley Cyrus does a fucking incredible cover of Zombie. Look at for, look on it for YouTube. It's amazing. It's the only reason why I even like her and anything she does. And this is not my music, but shit, that's great. So here we have Marvel Zombies. The comic run, I'll be honest, I never enjoyed. I've been over zombies for a while. I'm not in the zombie mood. Um, and I never enjoyed even Kirkman's uh, Walking Dead comic. I will admit, maybe the show had three or four good seasons. Some excellent episodes up there with the Game of Thrones threshold of quality. Which, by the way, I'm not a big fan of either. So, I'm just trying to be honest. I enjoyed the episode. Uh, kind of strangely. Maybe it's things that are going on in my life. And, I don't know, just needing to get away and escape in a cool cartoon. Everything is there. The animation, the sound. The voice acting, they've got lots of people back. Mark Ruffalo, Chadwick Boseman, Paul Bettany, Sebastian Stan, Evangeline Lilly, Paul Rudd, John Favreau, etc. You really um, get tied in and it, it kind of helps a little, just ground you when you hear these voices. So I'm going to give them credit for that too. This is still pretty good, great animation. I've said this before, it feels like there's weight to it, the momentum, the things they got on camera that move, feel like they have weight. This is continuing that. But the story itself is, actually, I, I kind of liked it. See, the, the comic book iterations and, and some of the ancillary stuff, because they've come out with, I think, Marvel Zombies, like five, not only five episodes, like five I don't know, editions or whatever. And it starts off pretty simple, and then it's like they're eating fucking Galactus and Silver Surfer. I find the whole thing ridiculously stupid. Never enjoyed the comics at all, like I said. This takes a little bit of a twist and takes away some of the morose, boring nonsense that's in the comics, like characters walking around with people's arms sticking out their stomach, making too many convoluted. Um, you know, this doesn't feel right. Nothing feels like it makes sense if you're zombies, you're zombies, but you're super powered. You know, it just doesn't work for me, just on the whole. But this episode was pretty good. The focus of certain characters and where they're going to um, come into the story was a little surprising since I do know the comics and, well, the, the later editions I just glanced through. But the first ones I thought maybe I would get into it because maybe at the time I was into zombies. In any case, this uh, plays with a couple of the movies again. Uh, what if? So it's um, Ant Man and the Wasp. Hank Pym goes into the quantum realm. This is kind of tying into the other one. Um, he finds Janet Van Dyne and she's infected with a. Quantum virus, they're calling it of some sort. It turns her into a zombie. She infects Pym. They both come back. Fast forward, zombie apocalypse across the world. Now, it ties into the Avengers when the Hulk is sent to warn Earth about Thanos after Thanos attacks Thor's ship, I believe, at the end of Ragnarok. So it's tying in those movies, and Hulk lands on Earth. Does his thing and they kind of speed it up. He goes to the Doctor Strange and he encounters two of Thanos' children or whatever they were part of the. They have some name to them in the comics too. But Thanos' lackeys are there, same from the movies. They confront them and then, since he couldn't find Strange, Doctor Strange, Avengers come and help him, but he, he can't see what's going on and they're doing it pretty cleverly. And then as this dust and dirt and explosions, um, Banner notices like they, they're doing something different. You can see them going and attacking them viciously, and it looks like they're climbing on them. 
and it's revealed that Tony Stark and some of them are uh, zombies. And that's how it kind of gets going. So you really got like two or three movies it's spinning off of. Sort of connecting to the last episode where it was like a murder mystery who was killing the Avengers as Nick Fury's trying to um, recruit them. You find out that it's been Hank Pym pissed at um, what happened to his wife and had Nick Fury's role in it. And then... This one is, you know, just a spin off of that. This is not bad. And like I said, I was surprised I kind of liked it. Uh, I think it has to do with the heart of uh, Spider Man, who um, kind of, you know, becomes the center of it, where in the comics he's just, you know, crying because he ate Mary Jane, I think. Now, there is a part in this cartoon where I didn't, where I kind of got out of it, and I was a little lost. Now, it could be personal stuff that's going on, but as they try to find a place that has a cure, because that'll be one of the tropes, they lose people along the way. There's some great stuff in there, and Peter starts, uh, they show an attachment to the cape, um, Dr. Strange's cape, and it's working on its own, it's helping them. And you're left with, uh, I think, like, um, you know, Spider-Man, Bruce Banner, Hulk. Uh, they find Black Panther, but he's got his leg cut off. And was, whatever. This is where I start to, I didn't enjoy it, and I would give it a negative. So eventually they go to this place, and they make it to, I think it's called Lehigh or something like that. And there's... Well, I give plot holes in these things sometimes, and like I said, I'm just not in the right frame of mind these days. There's a place to go to get there where people sacrifice and you lose people, and Vision is there. And Vision has the Mind Stone. It creates a frequency that keeps out the undead because they're not trying to rush the place. They're not trying to get through the fence, and the heroes notice that. Um... I did like uh, Happy's uh, bang bang thing. It's little things in the show. That was, it, was, it was good. But to get to Vision and there's a twist here. Vision is luring people here to be Wanda. He's got the cure, but he loves Wanda and she's a zombie in the basement. Hasn't been fed. As, and this is where I thought it was stupid. I just don't buy it. Didn't like the whole scenario. Because then Three minutes later, a vision's like, oh, I've seen my error of my ways. It just felt fucking dumb and stupid to me. I didn't like this whole angle. And it's really at the end, it's really just the, you know, it's the, it's the final piece of the episode because there's only a hint from my thumbnail about Thanos. But I felt it kind of cheapened things. I was like, okay, we got here for a cure. Um, vision starts telling them how they could broadcast the Mind Stone's frequency and perhaps cure the world. He has Ant-Man's head in a jar, which was hilarious, and he cured him. He cured the head. And he's making puns every five seconds. I, I liked it when the cape wrapped around it because it looked pretty cool. But the, this whole scenario, everything I kind of liked, and like I said before from the beginning of this podcast, I did not enjoy the Marvel comic zombies nor do I like the Walking Dead comic or the show. Although I, as I said, I do say there's, you know, three or four good, really, seasons. Some excellent work. And I'll give it that. There's great actors, great uh, special effects, practical makeup stuff. The Walking Dead did have, or possibly does have some real um, critical acclaim that it deserves, but just not for me. I really lost the interest right at this point, but it's at the end, it's just the, where does the story go, potentially, because it's just a, what if, that never really resolves, and this is where I have the problem here, I just didn't feel right, and their voices, everything's so good, it's artwork, everything's great, but I'm like, this is bullshit, Vision, has the Mind Stone, he can cure them, he's got this area around his place that they can't get to, 
And he can't kill Wanda because she's too powerful. But she hasn't fed. And when the heroes save Black Panther, he tells them, no, it's a trap. It's just, I thought it was stupid. I'm going to be honest. And then the Hulk, he hasn't been able to transform. It's, they're taking it from the movies when he came back and he couldn't help Tony and Doctor Strange fight off Call Obsidian and Ebony Moore, I think they're called. Well, Thanos is lackeys or lieutenants. But here, once it saves him, when it goes, one of them goes to bite him and the Hulk's arm turns green and it doesn't break the skin, he gets his other thank you. But at the end, he goes up against Wanda to give them time to get away. So, Vision all of a sudden has a turn and says, I've done the wrong thing, and pulls his own fucking mind gem out. And it's, I, I, this whole thing was so fucking stupid. I felt like this is where everything lacks in it. If it's the end and people want to say, Joe, the um, episode kind of was ruined by it, I'll, I'll, I'll understand. It didn't ruin the episode for me, and like I said, for my distaste of Marvel Zombies, from zombies in general these days, I was surprised I liked it. I was getting into the show. I was watching it. I was kind of curious how, you know, uh, Sharon Carter is like, you know, Peter Parker, Smile, Hope, and this is things that, um, where you see Peter Parker is the hope and the soul of the team that could survive and save everybody, and it kind of fit, and I liked it. Uh, Bucky Bonds, you got, um, you know, lots of people doing cool things to help get this mission progressed, and they fall off as we go along. Then we get to the end, and we're like, oh shit, it's Vision, he can save everybody, he's got the cure, but yes, he does, but no, he's just bringing people in, so he can, like, I think they were, in the comics, they, they took T'Challa's leg and they were feeding people, and I think that's what they decided to do, because the zombies are just eating everybody too quick. And if you don't eat, you get some kind of emotional fucking bullshit in the comics. I don't know. But she hasn't fed no And it just felt wrong. I, I fucking hit my head. I rolled my eyes. And I was like, oh, this is fucking stupid. And I lost it for the rest of the episode. But I'm going to kind of judge this on what's going on in my life. Things that are happening. And just a not for me thing. I don't know if it's. You know, it wasn't like a bad editing and things kind of ruined it. It's just like a choice that it wasn't for me. And I think it's ridiculous in the lore of Marvel. But this is a what if. This is the the means to do these changes. So I'll chalk it up to I, I fucking didn't like the endings. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm liking it even less as I'm talking about it. But I'm going to, you know, put my bias and my personal shit as evidence that this is probably good, people are really going to like it, they'll like that twist and things that are going on. But for me, it really didn't work out in the end. Now, they were able to get away, and the supposed um, future would be Parker and the survivors, or I think there's only like fucking two, get to broadcast the mind, mind Stone's frequency, and the world would be cured. But what happens is they show them going to do their job. And I think um, they go to, I think T'Challa and someone go to uh, get a Quinjet and they go to um, Wakanda. And there with his army is a zombified Thanos with an incomplete gauntlet. This also, I rolled my eyes because... I don't care. Like, I don't want to see that. I find this whole premise ridiculous to begin with. It just had this had a really good story revolving around Parker and his team who were falling off. And there were moments that captured me. They gave me some perspective on this and much better than the comics. But I, I don't care about a zombie Thanos with the gauntlet and some what if about it. Because... What happens? He put he gets the mind stone and he cures himself and could, is he gonna snap? Like I, it just doesn't. I don't care. Like some things just don't register in my brain right now, and I think this is kind of one of them. However, in the future, I'll go back to things when things are changed, and I could get a different perspective. You know, you watch something a couple more times, you understand what your own biases were, or 
at the time and place in your life where you were watching the fucking thing, what was going on. And I, I can understand that. So the end of this, this episode just kind of fucking lost me. I just got a distaste for it. But I'm going to judge the whole episode on the whole as a, a, a good episode. Like I said, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the interactions, the moments, the levity, the um, kind of seriousness they put in it. I did not and do not just care for zombie stuff to begin with. But, you know, I rolled with it. And my nitpick and my, you know, negatives about it are the, towards the end, they get to this place of refuge, you see vision, and I just didn't buy it, I don't buy it, I don't care, I didn't care to see Thanos at the end with the gauntlet, but I did like the journey, I did like that, um, growth of Peter, or not to grow all you, this, you know, indestructible hope, and and, you know, optimism he has that's kind of always being beat on and subdued. And he still finds a way to smile and come out. That whole thing I really enjoyed. And, you know, you got the voices. So, again, it really adds to everything. It, it, it does a really good um, job at that. And these are characters I love it's just for the most part. I don't um, just enjoy this twist and the theme in itself um uh you know i thought it was good i thought it was good and the guy you know kind of sounds like parker and i don't think it's um his actual uh the actual actor but really good trying to do impression and it just shows you that just the way they wrote the character the way they got into it and uh reveal things and progress things was done super well Again, I'll reiterate the sound, the visuals, the momentum this type of animation can give you feels good. Um, you know, I never thought I would get really into the cell shading type stuff, but they do it so well, and I'm really impressed with that. Maybe it's just something new, but I can get along with it and um, find myself immersed into it. And if I could feel the weight of things, and I could feel like you know when people move across the screen. That it feels real, and if that makes sense, you know, you get that difference between an average cartoon you're watching or an anime that is overboard in certain ways. So, I'm going to give this a recommendation. I still think the show is great. I don't like aspects of certain things, but I think, again, I think that's what What If really is going to do. Now, I didn't think I would like this episode from the beginning. I just don't care. I hated the comics, or I hated, but, you know, I just didn't like them, didn't care for them. Rolled my eyes so hard, my, you know, I saw brain cells die in my head. That's just stupid, ridiculous. What People love it, it's out there, fine. I'm not judging that. And coming into this episode already in a bad place, um, I just didn't want to care, and I found myself caring and getting into it, and you got to give props for that. I will... Definitely shit on this fucking stupid twist and the ending. However, I can understand my place in it. My, um, my the baggage I'm bringing to this fucking show when it is trying to tell some good what if stories. And again, a great premise to show characters in different ways. To, you know, um, you know, we don't get to see characters. You know, well, certain characters are always. I think the theme is certain characters will never change, and I think that's a great aspect too. It's like the heart of a character, who you are as Spider-Man, will probably never change. But then again, you can do that here. This would be the place to do that. So I guess that's how I'll end this. Um, I'm really excited about the show in general. I'm loving the premises and what's going on. I just have a couple of nitpicks about some of the episodes here and there. I'm kind of recognizing there could be just personal biases, especially this one because of what's been going on, but I recommend it. What if for Marvel on, I think Disney plus is just fabulous. Great. Um, look into the world. And there's this question I brought up a while ago. Me and my friend were talking about when I said, will they ever come back and, uh, rehash something? So could you see season two picking up 
one of the episodes picking up where this one ended. And looking at the broader spectrum, because when you look online, I think it's, they're kind of, um, they're kind of showing that the show is a product of Loki's show, that this branching of the multiverse and alternate realities is the catalyst for the show. So I'm thinking they might make a interconnected show where Sharon Carter will meet the Doctor Strange who destroyed his universe. Now, that's actually uh, something that I think my friend Fanny showed me with some, I don't know if it was a, if it was real or if it was just a clip from a thing they found or at some of these events they do where they go on panels, comic cons. But it kind of shows Sharon Rogers with what looks like the Doctor Strange who lost his heart instead of his hands. And I was like, be careful. They could be messing with us. It could be Doctor Strange who lost his puppy. Anyway, and that's getting me anything about the Matrix 4, which I don't know about the fucking trailer, but would a Keanu Reeves have a fucking deal that he had to look like John Wick and he wants he doesn't want to shave anymore or something? I don't know. From everything I see about that, that annoys the shit out of me. But again, I'm not in the best fucking place. I'm in, uh, I'm in a weird fucking um, mood these days. Just life going on. Happens to us all. Anyway, I wish you all the best. Take care of each other. Be well. I'll talk to you all next time. Bye-bye.